Does my heart condition make me more vulnerable to COVID-19? Heart patients aren't necessarily more prone to getting COVID-19 compared to anybody else. That really depends on all of the things we're supposed to do with respect to social distancing, keeping our hands clean, avoiding exposure to other people, uh, staying at home. Uh, that's what puts people at risk. So just because somebody has a heart condition doesn't make them more likely to get COVID-19. Am I at greater risk of severe symptoms or even death if I get COVID-19? So although heart patients may not necessarily be more likely to get COVID-19, they're more likely to have a more serious outcome if they do get it because a weakened heart or a bad heart condition like coronary artery disease puts their heart at greater stress if they have the infection, maybe gives them less reserve to fight the infection. So yes, they definitely have a more, more likely outcome that's not so good and that can include not surviving the infection. Considering that the COVID-19 vaccines were developed in less than a year, are these vaccines truly safe and effective? So a lot of people have expressed concern about the fact that we've managed to get so many vaccines, now four on the global market, in a relatively short time span. But that doesn't mean they're less safe. Normally vaccines take a long time to develop because there's a variety of different kinds of trials that are done one after the other. In this case, because a pandemic was in place, much more money was invested in the development of these vaccines and all of those different trials happened but at the same time instead of one after the other. So we have a lot of safety information and we have a lot of information that they're effective at helping prevent the infection or if somebody gets it to make it less severe. So we have enough information to say it's the smart thing to do to go ahead with these vaccines. What are the side effects of the vaccines? Will the side effects be any different for people with a heart condition or cardiovascular disease? The side effects from the vaccines have been really quite minimal. There's the obvious discomfort in the shoulder where the injection might, be, might occur, and that's pretty common with any shot. People who are used to getting the flu shot would have noticed that same sort of thing. Otherwise, some people notice some flu-like symptoms, aches, pains, maybe even low-grade fever. Usually if people get that, it's after the second dose for one of those in, uh, vaccines that has two shots that are required. That doesn't mean you've gotten the infection. In fact, none of these vaccines have live virus, so you can't get COVID-19 from them. It just reflects the fact that your body's immune system is kicking in, and so you're feeling the same sort of response as if there had been an infection on board. Those have been pretty mild, generally only last a few days at most, and heart patients aren't necessarily at any greater risk of having that compared to anybody else. I hear some people have an allergic reaction. As a heart patient, will I have an increased risk of an allergic reaction? So allergies with the vaccines have been really quite rare and heart patients aren't at any increased risk of having an allergy to the vaccine compared to anybody else. The people who are at risk are people who already have known allergies to vaccines or maybe people who are known to be very highly allergenic and have had severe allergic reactions like anaphylaxis. And if you fall into those categories, it is worth reviewing with your doctor as to whether you should proceed with the vaccine. But by itself, out of the blue vaccines are not causing allergic reactions to any severe degree. Can people on blood thinners get the vaccine? Yes, we wouldn't normally hold blood thinners for somebody getting a vaccination. The shot is quite minimal. The caliber of the needle is very small. And so there might be a slightly bigger bruise being on a blood thinner compared to someone else who isn't on a blood thinner, but we don't recommend holding it for that reason. The bruising is still generally quite minimal. On the rare occasion where somebody might have a bad bruise, they should talk to their family doctor about that. What happens after I get the vaccine? Can I stop wearing my mask and social distancing? So after the second and last dose of vaccine, we still don't think immunity occurs until at least two and probably closer to four weeks. So definitely immunity is not there um, completely just because the vaccine has been received. Secondly, we know that not everybody has 100% immunity. It's probably closer to 95%, which means there's probably a one in 20 chance that somebody can still potentially get the infection and pass on that virus as well. So the recommendations are really you should continue to practice all the same social distancing you did before because for say up to four weeks after the vaccine you're not even protected anyways and there's still that small group that might not have complete immunity and you don't want to infect anyone else. So until the pandemic is declared over and all of the masks and all of the social distancing can change you should still follow the same rules that everyone else is. Should I be concerned about the variants? So the variants are the interesting variable that we aren't completely sure of what's going to happen moving forward with this pandemic and whether this third wave will become severe or not. Uh, the experts are following it very closely. So far it looks like uh, the vaccines have at least some effect, if not really good effect on the variants, but that time will tell. 
The three main variants you've probably heard of are the UK variant, the Brazil variant, and the South America variant. And the UK variant is the one we're having to be exposed to mostly in this region. About half of the infections in Ontario now are with that variant, and probably 75% in Simcoe County. Uh, so we still want to protect with all of the same social distancing measures. You should still move forward with the vaccines. If in time the experts realize that the coverage isn't as adequate as it should be, they will just retool the vaccination and resupply it again. In the same way we get a flu shot every year to adapt to the changing flu, uh, the influenza A virus, we'll do the same thing with COVID-19. So carry on with vaccinations. The experts will advise us as to whether we need boosters or perhaps an annual shot down the way.